Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. We're going to go over the branch management application of Copado to show you how you can seamlessly integrate your Git version control with your Salesforce release process. If you have any questions, please add them in the Q&A section of the Zoom application. And we're going to go over them after finishing the live demo. Before we get started, let's see what are some of the key features of branch management. First of all, you can define the flow that your Salesforce changes are going to go through from the development environment all the way to production. This is our deployment flow, and it is tightly integrated with Git. Also, with branch management, you can review and auto-validate differences between your different branches. Also, it is easy for your different teams to work in parallel because the branch management application allows the merging of changes while they are being integrated in your integration environment. Also, you can easily keep your sandboxes in sync as your integration environment experiences new changes after deployment. You can back deploy those changes into your other sandboxes so that you can keep them in sync. This is replicating the Git flow. So you're taking a industry standard process into your Salesforce release process. Let's go ahead and see the application. All right, what you can see here is a deployment flow that has some development sandboxes linked to an integration environment, then to a testing environment, and then to production. And there's also a hotfix environment that's linked directly to production as well. As you may notice, there are different branches for each of my different environments. Copado will update these branches as you deploy new changes between your sandboxes. If you go to your repository, which in this case I'm using GitHub, but it can be any Git version control provider, you can see that I'm going to have my main branches here, which are the ones that you can see in your deployment flow. Now, once you have defined this flow, the first step is to also define your workload. This is done via the user stories. Now, the user stories can be created here directly in Copado so that you can use Copado as your own agile software. Or also we have a integration where we import user stories from other agile software like Jira, Rally, or Scrum Do. Once the user stories are here, you are ready to get started working. This is a user story which has some specifications of what needs to be done or what the requirement is about. And it typically starts in one of the development environments. Or if this is a hotfix, it would start in the hotfix environment. Now, this user story record can be assigned to one of your admins or developers that is in charge of working on it. So as an admin or developer, as soon as I'm finished with my changes, I can go ahead and come back to this record and commit my changes from here into my version control. When you click the Commit Files button, you will be taken to this page where Copado shows you all the metadata components that exist in the sandbox where the user story is currently located. So from this grid, I can easily search for my recently modified metadata components. This can be an Apex class, or this can be other type of configuration metadata, like custom fields, custom objects, profiles, etc. And I can filter by metadata type. So I can select some classes here as well. And then as soon as I click Commit, Copado and Branch Management application will create a feature branch for this user story. This feature branch will have the name of the user story. In this case, it's user story 3. So if I go to my repository, I will be able to see not only my main branches, but I will also see feature branches that contain specific changes of each user story. So if I go to this feature branch here, I can go ahead and see the commit history. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be able to see the metadata components that I committed. In this case, the Apex classes that I selected in the page in the previous page. Now, 
if you have already committed your components and you have updated them, you can always recommit as many times as you need. And the metadata component that has been committed also appears in the user story selections. So the metadata that has been modified for this requirement only needs to be selected once at the moment of the commit. Then, as you deploy this metadata from one sandbox or environment to another environment, Copado builds the package of your deployment for you. And it will take the metadata components that you committed and add them in the packaging. So instead of having to log into the sandboxes, create a deployment to a, a destination environment, uh, you just select them once in Copado, and Copado will already knows which sele selections you did and will deploy those from one environment to another. The user story record not only works as your deployment tool and the tool where you track which components are being modified per requirement, but it helps you to implement quality gates as well. So for example, if there is any Apex code, Copado will detect that and will allow you to run Apex test of the test classes of this user story. So you can see the results within the user story. For example, you can see if you have any failing methods. And these results are saved in fields in the user story so that you can do validations on these fields. For example, you can approve or reject this user story if the coverage is less than the minimum or if there are any failing methods, for example. So when I mean by approve or reject, I mean that you can, for example, set an approval process on this record. This is a Salesforce approval, standard approval process. And when a developer or admin clicks on this submit for approval button, you can check that the Apex, if there's Apex code, and also if the coverage is good. Um, and also, admins and developers can validate their metadata changes. So I can, if I click on this validate button, Copado will start a validation deployment with the selected metadata and will print the results in this section. So this way I can verify that my changes are deployable. Instead of waiting for the day of the release I, and realizing that maybe there was uh, something that I missed adding in this user story or there's a deployment error, um, you can, as an admin or developer, I can detect if there are any issues beforehand at the time of development. And so as part of your approval process, you can also check that the metadata of this user story is deployable with this status here. Now, all you need to do to deploy this user story to the next environment is to check the promote and deploy checkbox. This will start or trigger the deployment automatically, and you can do so manually. Or as part of your approval process, you can link your approval action to check this checkbox so that as soon as you approve the request, the user story starts deploying to the next environment. Now, back in the deployment flow, as you deploy metadata to integration, Copado detects those changes and allows you to back deploy those user stories into other lower environments. For example, if I click this backward arrow, I can see how many user stories behind is this sandbox. User stories behind mean user stories that have gone through integration, but that I haven't back deployed into my sandbox yet. This means that my sandbox is out of sync. So I can go ahead and select the user stories and back deploy them. Now, something that is very important about branch management is that your deployments are happening out of merges. So either you deploy forward or if you deploy backward, Copado creates a merge of your changes. In the case of user stories, Copado merges the feature branches. If we go back here to GitHub, let's say that I am deploying this user story. 
Coparo will create a promotion branch out of your target branch. In this case, in my flow, my target branch would be integration. So out of the integration branch, Coparo will create a promotion branch. All right, so this is a copy of integration. And in this promotion branch, Coparo will merge my feature branch of the user story. So this way, uh, once the merge has completed, Coparo will deploy the metadata components of my user story as how they were merged in the promotion branch. And also, before I even try to promote or back promote user stories, I can always check the file differences, meaning how my metadata is going to be affected if I deploy those user stories. So if I click on this forward arrow, for example, I can go ahead to the file differences section and you can see that my user stories in dev1 are, are creating this new object. Um, they have updated this class, this visual force page, the labels and the opportunity object. So for example, in the opportunity object, you can see that there is a new field in here uh, called classic. And also in terms of this Apex class, you can see that uh, it has been updated. So this is how the class looks like in Dev1. Uh, it has some values, and this is how it is in integration. So if I were to deploy this user story to integration, these values would be updated with the ones of my user story. So before you deploy forward or back deploy, you can always check the differences as well. At a user story level, if you go to your user story, you will have a pull request option here. So this pull request will compare my feature branch against my target, which would be integration. So you can see that these components, these Apex classes will be created if I deploy this user story. So as part of your release process, you can have a pull request review as part of your process so that more experienced developers or the release manager can review the lines of code that have been modified or any profile changes, for example. Also in the user story, we keep a track of the metadata that is being modified across all your different environments. So for example, if Kobara shows me there is a potential conflict, this means that someone else is also working on the same component. So if I click on this component, Copata will show me the list of other user stories where this same component is also being modified. So at this point, I can start a discussion with the other admin or developer on the changes that we're doing. Um, for example, if we're modifying a description, are, are we modifying the same description, for example? Now, with the version control, you have the advantage that you can directly compare your feature branch of this user story against the feature branch of the other user story. So if I click on pull request, I am able to see, for example, if they are able to be simply merged or if there is a conflict. Uh, so if there's a conflict, uh, that, that is telling me already that uh, perhaps there's uh, something we can agree on. For example, if I modified this description in my user story and also the other developer modified it, well, we should discuss which change should eventually end up in production. Is it my change in my user story or is it the description of the other developer in the other user story? Coparo lets you automate the commits, the merges, the deployments, but it wouldn't be able to know which description you want in production. So this process would be involving your business users that requested this change or the release manager or between the admins or developers as well. So if, for example, it is decided that my description shouldn't move forward, but I should take the other description, I can wait for the other user story to be deployed to integration and then back deploy it to my environment so that the description is updated in my environment. 
or I can just simply copy the description of the other user story and paste it in, in my component, in my user story. So going back to the flow, just as you can take user stories to integration and back deploy them, you can also move them forward into the next environment. The reason why you see this green arrow is because Copado does automatic validation deployments of every metadata that has been modified in the integration branch. This way you can detect if your changes, all your changes are deployable. If you see a red arrow is because there must be a deployment error. And so even before the day of the release, you can review if there are any errors so that you can troubleshoot them ahead of time. These are error, errors returned by the metadata API that Copado uses for the validation deployment. So if I look at the arrow forward, I will be able to see which user stories are ahead, meaning which user stories arrived in integration, but that I haven't deployed to UAT yet. So I have these two. So if I review file differences, I can see how these user stories will affect UAT. And also I can create a promotion and review the promotion branch if I want to see how the files uh, got finally merged. And then you can start your deployment. So imagine that you have accumulated 100 user stories in UAT. You will be able to know before the day of the release if your 100 user stories are deployable or not. And if not, you can troubleshoot ahead of time. And if you develop hotfix user stories in this environment and deploy them to production, you can then back deploy that hotfix change down to all your lower environment. And Copado will introduce that hotfix change as a merge. So this way, you can keep all your sandboxes in sync with the latest changes, even in production as well. All right, we have several questions coming up. I will just finish the showcase of the branch management application, and we're going to move on with the questions. Continuing with the user story, we have enhanced the deployments by including deployment steps or deployment tasks. These can be pre-deployment steps before your metadata is deployed or post-deployment steps. You can have, for example, manual tasks. These are tasks that cannot be automated and so someone has to do them manually. So in this record, you describe what this task is about and also where it has to be done. Is it in the target org, in the source org, in another system? Let's say you have SAP integrated with Salesforce and you have to update it along with the deployment of this user story. So you can describe that here. And so what will happen is that when you deploy this user story, as you can see, this is, this is a deployment record, your deployment will have different steps. Here in the Git promotion, your metadata is being deployed. Uh, this is the one from the user story. But you also have your pre-deployment and post-deployment steps. For example, uh, if it is a manual task step, your deployment will pause at this step so that you make sure that you do it. Once you finish doing this task, you can mark it as complete. And then Copado will continue with the next deployment step. This way, imagine that you are deploying 100 user stories and each of them have a manual task that needs to be done. Then when you deploy those 100 user, user stories together, you will have in your deployment 100 manual tasks. This way you can make sure that you do them and you keep track of them as well. You can also deploy data records. For example, if you're user stories about creating a new object, and you would like to deploy some test records so that this user story is easily tested in the next environment. If you have some tasks that can be automated with Apex, like some configuration changes, you can also include an Apex Anonymous block or script in your deployment so that it 
executes in the target org as part of your deployment. And you can also do custom setting deployments as well. So the user story has a lot of other functionalities as well, like for example, including Selenium testing and doing uh, keeping track of manual test, who has actually tested this requirement. Uh, these are great functionalities. And if you would like to have a, a follow-up session to know more about uh, these other functionalities and all the other applications of Copado, please contact us after the webinar so that we can schedule a call with you and your team. All right, and one last thing I wanted to show about branch management is that if you have, let's say, 30 sandboxes for development, it can take some time if a new change arrives into integration and then you need to back deploy those changes to each of those 30 sandboxes. Now, we have a tool called Mass Back Promote. So with the Mass Back Promote, you can select a source environment, in this case would be integration, and Copado will find all the user stories that have gone through integration. And if they haven't still been back deployed to one of your lower environments, in this case, you can see that these three user stories um, started in dev one. So they need to be back deployed to dev two and dev three. For example, this user story 14 was a hotfix that came from production, so it needs to be back deployed to all the development sandboxes as well. So Copado does this automatic detection, and you can disable the auto selection and just select them uh, yourself. Uh, and then once you finish selecting the user stories you want to back promote, you can go ahead and, and, and do the um, promotion deployment from here. All right, thank you for listening. Let's go ahead and move on with the questions and answers. The first question is, can you show a flow where Dev1 and Dev2 make changes to the same Apex class? How do those changes get merged? And what if there are conflicts? This is a great question. And I have an example where I modified an Apex class in dev1, and I also modified it in dev2 in a different user story. So I've already moved the user story of dev2 into integration. So this class is different in integration and it's also different in dev1. Now, if I were to deploy the user story from dev1 to integration, Copado will do a merge. So the class is not overriding the class in integration. How can I see that? Well, in this forward arrow here, I can see file differences as we saw before. So I have this class that I was talking about, the test wrapper example controller. In here, if I click show differences, in dev1, I updated the values of the billing street city and postal code in dev1. So if I deploy this user story to integration, then the values uh, will be updated with the ones from dev1. So the change that was done in the dev2 sandbox is at the bottom of this class, it's a new method. So at this moment, this is just a simple merge of the latest changes. How can we see then the other method from dev2 that is being merged into dev1? Well, since that change is already in integration, if I click this backward arrow, I can go ahead to the file differences and I can see that this class has a change. So you can see that in integration, there is a new method. And if I back deploy that user story from integration into dev1, you can see that this new method will be added in dev1. So the changes that I did on the billing details at the beginning of the method, they are Will, will remain unchanged in dev1. So this is the process that Copado follows, it's just a git merge. Now, if for example, there was a conflict at a specific line of code, let's say that I modified one line in my user story and the other user modified the same line. In this particular case, 
let's say that I modify this and the other developer also modified this. In this case, what will happen is that if I deploy my user story from dev1 to integration, my change in the conflicting line will win over the conflicting line in the destination. Everything else will be simply merged. So in this case, before I deploy my user story to integration, it is a best practice that all developers and teams that are working on different sandboxes, that they keep their sandboxes continually in sync. This can be every day at the beginning, uh, you take the first 20 minutes of the day to back deploy any new changes from integration. And in that process, you will be able to detect if someone has also modified the same lines, for example, the same configuration. Now, when you back deploy, if Coparo encounters a conflict in a specific location of the file, then Coparo will automatically auto-resolve it. And you will get an email with the list of files that were auto-resolved. So you can review this before back deploying. And if you would like to do a manual merge, meaning you would like to have control of how those changes are merged, at the moment, what you can do, and which is the current process, is that you would create a promotion. This won't deploy the changes into my sandbox yet. But in this promotion, Copado will create a promotion branch and it will merge the user story feature branches from integration. And so you can review how the merge was done, especially if you get an email that there was an auto conflict resolution. And you can manually resolve the conflict in the promotion branch in Git. Once you've done that, you can continue deploying the promotion and Copado will take the files as how you merge them in the promotion branch. In our next version of Copado, which is being released end of March, that process of reviewing the conflict in Git will now be available from the Copado UI. If that is the case, you can tell Copado to not auto-resolve code so if Copado encounters a conflict, it will pause your promotion and it will let you review the conflicts. In this page, you can see that I have two conflicted files. So if I click on one of them, I can see my class. And this section right here is the original text in my promotion branch. And this is what is being merged from my feature branch, which is causing a conflict. So if I would like Copado to auto-resolve, meaning this will win over this, then I can simply mark this component as auto-resolve. So the next time that I recreate my deployment of my promotion, Copado will know that it has to auto-resolve this component. If you would like to do the manual merge, you can then remove the merge conflict markers and do your own merge conflict resolution. Once you've done editing your file, you can go ahead and save it. And then Copado will mark it as resolved. Therefore, the next time you deploy this promotion, Copado will take the file as you left it in here and we'll push this version as part of the merge. The second question is, can a promotion and feature branches be deleted in Git after they have been processed? This is correct. So once the feature branches and promotion branches are no longer needed, you can delete them. Basically, Copado will use them as you deploy from one environment to another. But once the user stories have arrived to all your environments, you can safely delete those feature branches and promotion branches. In the next version of Copado, you will have an option to delete those branches from the UI. At the moment, you need to delete them from your Git repository. The third question I have here is, when will Salesforce DX integration features be available? Well, in our next uh, release that's coming up end of March 2018, 
we're going to be releasing our Copado DX application, which will let you handle the complete uh, DX lifecycle of your release process. So we're going to be announcing it in the Trailhead X event in San Francisco. Uh, so if you're at the Trailhead X event, don't miss that one. It's going to be big. And nonetheless, we're going to be sending the release communications and videos regarding our DX application once it's ready as well. The next question I have is, how many environments can you add in the flow? Well, the flow expands as per your needs. And we have several customers that have many teams in parallel. So you can create clusters of your teams or projects, each one with their own integration environment. And you can have uh, different clusters in your flow. And then all those team or project integrations, they merge into a single integration environment. And from there, you take it on your those user stories forward to production. The next question is, is it mandatory to have both the promote change and promote and deploy checkbox in the user story? And can you modify this? Yes, so the fields promote change and promote and deploy, they come by default in the layout, but you can remove them or either entirely from the layout or from specific profiles or permission sets, depending on the different user roles that are accessing this record. This is just a, a normal Salesforce layout. So you can remove fields that you don't need. You can add custom fields as well. And also you can do your own workflows and validation rules and pr even process builder with the Copato objects. The next question is, how do you rerun a deployment with failed test or failed deploy? Well, if you have a deployment that is having any errors, or maybe it's just a specific step that has a deployment error, you can go ahead and click the deploy button. And from here, all you need to do is deploy outstanding. Deploy outstanding means that Copado will start the, de the deployment from the step that has been failed. Otherwise, if you want to deploy everything again, you can just click deploy all. Great, thank you for the questions. The next one would be, how do you handle sandbox refreshes in the flow? All right, so we have a documentation article that covers this scenario. It is a very simple process. When you uh, refresh a sandbox, for example, this one, the org ID will change. So the first step you, is that you need to update your environment record with the new org ID and then notify all users that have credentials on these environment to re-authenticate them in Copado. And from there, the next step is that you can do a backup of your previous brand, Dev3 branch in this case, and you will need to create a new one from master called Dev3, for example. So just as the refresh is a, a a new copy of production, then the corresponding branch should also be a new copy from master to simulate the sandbox refresh process. Then when you connect your sandbox to integration, if there are some user stories that have gone through integration that have not been released to production, then those will appear as back deployment enabled. So you can back deploy those user stories currently in development or in testing or integration uh, down into your newly refre refreshed sandbox. What is a good way to capture admin changes in production and capture them in the lower environment? This is a very good question. The best practice would be that you have a hotfix environment where you create hotfix user stories and deploy them to production. Then you can back deploy them to your lower environments. It may happen though that changes are made directly in production. In this case, what you can do is you can create a user story that starts directly in production, and then you commit those components that were modified. Then that user story, you would back deploy it to your lower environments and also to the hotfix environment so that it is updated with that change.
if you don't know what exactly has modified in production, then uh, what you, we recommend is that you have a daily backup of production in another branch and even in another repository. And so in your daily backups, you would be able to track what specific components have been modified. And that way, uh, those are the components that you will commit in the user story that starts in production. All right, those are the questions that we have. If you have more questions and you would like to have a specific demo with you and your team where we can also hear what your current process is and what would be the best way to integrate Copado, for example, into your existing process, what would be some of the best practices that you can implement with your team and in your organization, just send us an email to sales at copa.do and we will be following up with you to schedule that session. As a conclusion then, we can say that the branch management application turns your Git repository into the source of truth of your metadata. As we saw, all your deployments are happening out of Git, out of your promotion branches. So you have full visibility of what exactly is being deployed. Also, you can monitor differences between branches and you can validate these differences between environments as well. With the green and red arrows, you can know if your metadata differences are deployable or not. As well, you can merge your user stories into the integration environment and then sync back those changes into the other lower environment. This makes it seamless to have different or multiple teams working in parallel where before they deploy to integration they would sync any new changes so that when they deploy to integration they have already reviewed and resolved any conflicts and when working with the user stories you get the advantage of keeping track of the metadata components per each requirement and also adding code review in your feature branches as well as implementing quality gates with approval processes, validation rules. And very important, not only developers are able to work with Git or version control now, even uh, non-technical team members like business users or admins are also able to check in their changes into Git and be part of the release process with version control. Well, going back to what is coming next with Copado, we are launching our Copado Academy where you and your team members are able to be certified at different levels. So there will be different certifications like Copado Admin, Copado Developer, Copado Release Manager, or Copado Change Management User. This Copado Academy will be in a platform that will be easy to use and it will have interactive content. Also, as mentioned before, we are releasing our Copado DX application at the end of this month, and we will be at the Trailhead X event where we will be showcasing the application. We are also Silver Sponsor Sydney Salesforce World Tour event that's happening next week. We are also Summit Sponsors at Trailhead X. We're going to have a, a big booth right in the, in the main area come and talk with us if you're already using Copado. And if you would like to use Copado, come and talk to us as well. And we can get to know each other and show you the new features of the application. And coming up is the Sonar Cube code scan integration. So that besides being able to choose PMD, Apex static code analysis that we have today in the Copado, you will also be able to leverage your code scan if you're working with code scan at the moment. Also, we are very happy to announce that we are a Velocity strategic partner. So all the Velocity metadata is going to be able to be deployed using the Copado application. Just as we saw in the user story where you select metadata in a sandbox, you will be able to see any Velocity metadata that you have and that you have changed so that you can commit it and you have it in Git. And then you can also deploy in just following the exact same process as with any standard Salesforce metadata. 
and we have a new integration with the Welkin suit. It's a very popular IDE for Salesforce. And from the Welkin suit IDE, you will be able to connect to your different user stories and commit to them directly without necessarily having to use the UI of Copado on Salesforce. So developers are able to check in their changes directly from the IDE and then submitting for approval for the release managers to take the user stories from there forward. Thank you very much for joining us at today's webinar. As mentioned, if you have any other questions or if you would like to book another demo or a specific demo of a specific topic, just send us an email and let us know so that we can schedule that session right away. Thank you very much.